As a rider, you probably appreciate a bike that turns in easily, follows the road, and generally does what you expect when you expect it. And while most motorcycles start off handling well, I found there are some things that can creep in gradually over time and really screw up a bike's handling. What are they and how do you fix them? Let's open up the shop manual and find out. This episode of the Shop Manual is brought to you by Kershaw, my go-to unboxing knife and a tool I carry with me everywhere. Get 25% off your order at kershawknives.com with code NEWKNIFE25. Whether your bike is handling weird now and you're trying to figure out why, or you just want to be able to identify common issues in the future, here are five problems that I've encountered often enough that I figured it was worth making a video about. Now, keep in mind that these issues I'm listing are progressive, meaning they will increase in severity as things wear. That being the case, you might not notice them right away, or worse yet, you might unconsciously adapt and not notice until things get really bad. The good news though, is that once you fix the problems, your bike's gonna feel a lot better. One of the first things you should check is your tires. You'd think that tire wear would be an obvious red flag, and yet people tend to underestimate how much a flat spotted rear or a triangulated front tire will inhibit a bike's handling and stability. Front tire wear is especially problematic because it can appear minor but has an outsized impact on how your bike steers. If the shoulders are worn flat, giving the tire a triangular profile, or if there's cupping, meaning that the tread groove is worn low on one side but is still tall on the other, then your bike steering can feel, well, all kinds of crappy. But here's the thing, since the tire's profile erodes slowly over the course of thousands of miles, you just sort of get used to it. That's why it's important to check tire pressure and condition regularly, and why spooning on new tires with a fresh, round profile is so satisfying. New tires can make it feel like a new bike, at least in terms of handling. Sticky or worn steering head bearings will also affect your bike's handling. And don't I know it. Several times now, I've ridden motorcycles that exhibited an odd and unnerving behavior. As soon as you initiated steering input, it would feel like someone had nudged the side of the bike. It was a subtle sensation, but it really sapped my confidence, and I had to deal with it all the way up the Dalton Highway in Alaska. Turns out the problem was either tight, dry, or worn steering head bearings. You see, when the bearings that secure the fork and the front wheel to the chassis can't pivot freely, turning the handlebars actually turns the chassis slightly in the other direction. That really screws with your balance and generally just makes the motorcycle feel unwieldy and awful. And like tire wear issues, problems with the steering head bearings often take a long time to develop. Usually it's tens of thousands of miles. To check your steering head bearings, put the bike on its center stand or a rear stand, and then carefully jack up the front of the bike so that the front wheel is just off the ground. Now swing the steering from lock to lock. If there's a lot of drag, or if the steering feels notchy as you swing it side to side, or if the handlebar kind of pops back to center on its own when you release it, that suggests an issue with your steering head bearings, most likely wear, that you should definitely do something about. Keep in mind that if the handlebar flops to one side or feels like it wants to turn on its own, that might be because the control cables or the wiring harness are imparting a little bit of pressure and not necessarily because of an issue with the bearings. Excess throttle slack is definitely something that will make your bike harder to ride, and it's one of my pet peeves. Sloppy throttle free play is something we have covered before on the shop manual. It's one of those simple little things that can really ruin your riding experience because if there's excess throttle slack, there's going to be a delay between when you open the throttle and when the engine actually responds. Now, the throttle cables will stretch slightly and wear into their housing, so throttle slack is something that increases over time. The good news, though, is that it is super easy to check and adjust, and we've already got a video that shows you how to do it. Speaking of excess slack, a severely worn chain and sprockets give a similar sensation to too much throttle free play and can make feeding power in smoothly harder than it needs to be. If your chain is sagging and loose, you might just need to adjust it or it could actually be worn out, in which case there is excess clearance between the link pins and the bushings. 
That little bit of added clearance within each link can add up to a lot of tensile play, and that can make the initial phase of acceleration and engine braking abrupt, which again, makes a bike harder to ride. Tightening your chain to the proper spec may make throttle pickup smoother, but if your rear axle is at the limit of its adjustment, or if you're able to pull the chain away from the rear sprocket and see daylight under the links, that means your drivetrain is worn enough to warrant replacement. And finally, let's not forget your suspension. Now, if your engine leaked a little bit of oil every few days, I'm talking like a couple drops, how many of you would wipe it up with a rag and carry on? I mean, I would. Now, how many of you would do the same thing if your fork seals or your shock seal were weeping a little oil? Nah, no, no hands up. This is not the same thing. And yet, I have seen riders who will roll around for months with leaking suspension. In fact, even met a guy who had the audacity to tell me that his fork stopped leaking on its own. It didn't stop leaking, it ran out of oil. Once you start losing suspension oil, you start losing damping as well. So your bike will bounce more and it won't feel as planted or stable. And like tire wear issues or head bearing problems, suspension leaks can take a while to show up. They can be very gradual, so you might not even notice the deterioration in your bike's damping. It's also not just bad for the bike's handling, the oil usually drips down the fork and onto your brakes, which is obviously very bad, and eventually the loss of lubrication will damage the bushings in your fork and shock. So if you notice oil or grime accumulating at the seals of your fork or shock, get them serviced ASAP. Seriously, don't delay, you gotta handle that stuff. And there you have it. A handful of issues that may seem insignificant but can subtly or substantially affect the way your bike rides. So if you like the way your motorcycle steers and goes over bumps and generally behaves, you're gonna wanna keep an eye out for these problems so they don't sneak in and ruin your bike's handling.